who came forward back in 1998, really, not that long ago, I was able to have uh, the originals still kept inside of plastic containers so they didn't get oxidized and fade in colors and all this stuff. And that um, now they're, they're called Ken's Archive, and you can go to the the uh, Roswell, New Mexico, um, what do they call it, the Museum of, of uh, Extraterrestrials and Research Center, UFO, yeah, UFO Research Center in Roswell. They have a digital copy of all of the records, uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of pictures and records. They have them there, and then uh, three different universities that I gave copies of that information to. So now that I was told at the time I was guided that I needed to get get them out to the public as much as possible, then they would have to leave me alone because then the question comes up, okay, what did you do to Ken Johnston? Did you guys bump him off or what? So I think that was my only – and I'll say that for other people that have information. You have to you have to get a hold of them and go public for your own safety because, unfortunately, until we have full disclosure and the government's accepting the fact that we are, we are not the only beings in the universe and uh, – your safety is to be public. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in on top of yours, and so I'll shut up and let the next one come up, okay? Come on, TJ. You're you're doing the rounds. <laughs> okay. A mad fell off, so he'll be back in a moment. So um, I'll – You can take yes. it. See you, TJ. What? What? You can go now. Oh, yes. I'll oh, I'll go. <clears throat> Um, I was looking at the International UFO Museum for Ken, folks. That's in Roswell, New Mexico. And it is, that's right. uh, you can look up Roswell UFO Museum, our International UFO Museum and Research Center. And that is at www. which we don't have to really say anymore, World Wide Web. You can just say the name of something with the .com, .org, .net. Whatever it is, now we've got .agency, but Roswell UFO Museum, and they usually have a, a big get-together in Roswell every year, and we've always supported them around July 4th. And Ken has been a speaker there in the late Stamps and Friedman, and uh, we miss them, but and with my Allied Command organization, it's part of my company, American Communications Online, so... I've put it on UFO Association to build articles and bylaws, but we also have the UFO Association, and I've started these years ago. We have the UFO Association.org if you're interested in being a who's who in a directory for um, a trade association. And <clears throat> I'll probably put the museum link on there. You can have websites and put links if you want for free or charge either way, but uh, – I've had a lot of library type of things, and uh, with our group here, uh, we're going to start sharing more and more information, and I'd like to share <clears throat> that Amad's back, so I'll turn him on in a minute. <laughs> Amad, I took your spot so you can take mine, and Tommy uh, will rotate her, me and Tommy and you again, or we'll talk about that, but I'd like to start sharing that more than I have, because my husband's passed. And his legacy to me was to tell about the Allied Command and the patch he wore with five stars, or we wore, on our shoulder. And uh, I'm using that to come and bring my story out in my books I've written about for years. But I haven't really marketed them or put them out there. So I'm going to try to do better about putting the books out there <clears> for <throat> those that are interested in the original Allied Command and <clears throat> our relationship with beings that came and went because Tommy hasn't heard that part. Most anybody that knows me has no idea how that works. And it's uh, multi-layered, it's multifaceted. And the factions that uh, I worked with were highly intelligent beings that looked like us. And from what I understand, there are parts and people have always come and gone from this planet and so I have no reason to disbelieve what I've been told. So uh, what I'm doing is going to be disclosing the information that I've shared only with people here on this radio station or in my books. And uh, now maybe we can 
get together and uh, as the Allied Command group here. And, of course, there's different groups that call themselves Allied, our command, our communication groups. But mine is a communication group, and we're in broadcasting. And uh, I would like to share that the ones I worked with were very benevolent, and they were very high-minded, logical. And uh, they did not like the factions that would uh, abduct people at all. And I'll be more than happy to explain all that And uh, as we go along with this group. It's a way to make me 20 years to learn. What's that sound? <laughs> uh, let me see. Mad, can you go uh, yeah, next? I'd like to add something to that if I can. All right. Go ahead. Yeah, that is – yeah, let me – if you don't mind, Mad, let me jump. Because um, if you look at the um, the – Photo industry, the company that makes all of our movies and all these things. And you go back into good grief back in the late 40s and um, when they had the the, um, the War of the Worlds. And then you had um, uh, a lot of the TV shows. You had the aliens. It was a, um, a monster bug that would, you know, whatever it was, go around and kill it. And then as time went on and we got into uh, uh, advanced technology and, and we got jet aircraft and we got this satellites were put up in. And then all of a sudden, the, the the movie theater, they started indoctrinating us as people that realized that, oh, they're not all monsters out there. They're not all out here to invite us for dinner as the main course. <laughs> but uh, for us, like Star Trek. And Star Trek, um, gosh, I remember when it first started, the very first one. And uh, we progressed on that all the way up to the point. Now, that's that's how we wound up getting to a point where, as a species here on this planet, we're basically ready now to make the total direct contact, even then where they're going to be in direct contact with uh, our different various governments, but then it will all be for the benefit of – and yes, there are some negative extraterrestrials out there, primarily with the one group all the reptilians and all that still want to dominate the universe. But uh, by and large, we are all uh, interested in the – further development of intelligent species throughout the universe. So that's that's kind of the way I like to see it. And, and the whole thing, the concern was, if you'll notice, we have been indoctrinated, and slowly we've been brought up to the point where as a, as a, a being that we're ready to realize we aren't the only ones in the universe. There are others out there. So with that, Matt, bring it on. Uh, Tommy, I... Tommy, I think you should go next, and then we'll go back to Mad because y'all brought me in, and we'll rotate back to Mad. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just want to say the new Terminator is coming out, and I guarantee it's going to be one of the biggest box offers hits again, uh, going back to Creature Aliens. Uh, I believe uh, there's multiple kinds, and I dealt with so many people with different aspects of what aliens they work with, including myself. Uh, very few of them look human. The Pleiadians, which is what Billy Myers worked with, one of the most popular UFO people out there in the UFO world, uh, not popular anymore, but he had the most pictures and everything out there mainstream, uh, dealt with. And they're humans because they are us from the future. Now, if we go into other alien races, uh, if, you, if you're looking at the reptilians, the greys, the, the, the mantis, and mantis are, are higher than all the rest of them, uh, are very uh, unfriendly at any level. So... It, it's like out of say, I know a lot of the famous speakers spoke about 37 races, including your husband, TJ, right? And uh, how many of them look exactly human or even close to being human? Then you have to look at what their diet would be. And then you also have to look at 90%. And I'm just telling you this because I know it's a fact uh, that most of the alien races that come here are radioactive. Uh, now, the one particular race in the United States working with the government, the tall whites, they can't even touch us or we'll die. That's how dangerous they are. So uh, there's a lot of things as far as when we say, well, the good race. What is a good race? I know the people that started speaking about the first good race, and I'm not going to say his name, well, Alex Collier. And he was talking about his race. Not one thing he ever said about that race came out, but everything he prophesied did. Uh, but, I mean, Dremel Melchizedek said he was going to bring the crystal race out from inside the earth, which he never did. Uh, so there's a lot of races that are supposedly here or can be here, but uh, working at different levels. But the crystal race was always here. Now, when we talk about the uh, tall whites, they came here, and they're on a mountain on 
on Area 54. So, yeah, we have different aspects of where, what alien races can come and be friends with us, never mind what they're going to give us. And I could tell you one last thing. Tesla worked with a race. I, I, I can't. I'm still trying to ask every psychic I know, every channel I know, what race it really was, not who they think it was. Because they gave him that technology, which is actually the, all the horrible weapons that we have on this planet right now. And when, when they go into G5, that's another weapon that was created for war. It wasn't created for a cell phone for people to use. So technology, what they're giving us, has nothing to do with helping us become spiritual. And to me, that's more important than anything else. And, and I'll, ask, I'll say one more thing. All through history, what alien race helped us make, create, or do anything spiritual at a spiritual level or even closely related to our word of spiritual and what it means? Because uh, going back to the pyramids, it didn't help people become spiritual. Going back to the Mayans, the Aztecs, and everybody else, they, they were still sacrificing women and children. So where's the spiritual part of that? I mean, when we talk about the Anunnaki, I mean, I don't even want to talk about them. They came with a couple other races. It wasn't just the Anunnaki that destroyed Atlantis. Uh, I was there, so I can tell you the truth about that from my direct experience being there. So, uh, yeah, I would love to see a good race. I, I would, I'm dealing with a light ship that blinks at me every other night when I go outside if the sky is clear. They blinked at me 120 times about two months ago, and I, and I said, look, you want to talk? Come down. Uh, I know they can't come near me, but I said, look, can you communicate with me? And I've been trying every kind of technique to do that. I work with a couple of different psychics. I work with a, uh, a person that works with aliens and demons. And he said, just open up to it. I said, I've been trying, and I won't do drugs to do it. Uh, then I won't feel it's real. But I'll leave it at that. Back to you, TJ. Sorry. I'm mad. Well, when it comes to technology, technology is a two-edged sword or a two-edged sword. I mean, it can be used for good or it can be used for bad, and that's been the case since the beginning of of time. When when a guy picked up the first rock and hit the other guy, he could either build with it or sculpt with it or he could kill with it, and that's the same thing with all technology. It's how we intend it to be used that makes the difference. Yeah, I, let me add one question. First time I had ever heard the statement that um, he made with regard to uh, the tall whites being radioactive and that if we touched them, we would die. That, um, I, that's the first I've ever heard of that. Can you elaborate a little bit more on the source of information? All right. I, 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 I didn't, I didn't say they I, would. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, uh, and, and I have been off planet uh, quite a few times. And um, and I know I've been close to um, uh, the tall whites. Of course, those, it's like your ETs, the, short, the small grays, but the tall whites, the ones you're speaking of. So, okay. Um, I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Go ahead. Well, I didn't say they were radioactive. I said a lot of the alien races are. The reptilians are, are radioactive. The grays are radioactive. I mean, that's how they can find it when they landed and things like that. That's what the whole MUFON program is about. Uh, but, again, the tall whites... Uh, my friend works with them directly, and he said that not anymore, but uh, they wanted to take the United States to another world that was just like planet Earth, and the United States refused to do it. But in the interim, I, I said to him, which I ask everybody that deals with aliens, what's their favorite food? What do they live on? And one of the foods that they want from planet Earth is strawberries, believe it or not. And uh, I can, because I, I deal with the truth to the max, and I say, well, what race would come here Every creature, every alien, every entity needs food if they're in a physical body. And that's what they need more than anything else, more than houses, ships, planes, boats, water. Uh, food is what keeps them alive. So what is their diet, especially like on Mars? What is their diet? What is on the moon? What's their diet? What do reptilians like to eat? Humans. What do greys like to eat? Humans. And I, I saw an actual video, a video of that. And the tall whites... They don't, they're friendly. I mean, they're not attacking us and not fighting with us. They're on government property. Only one person's allowed up where they are. Because there's area 52, 53, and 54. I mean, and you go up to where the reptilian, uh, the higher the other races are. But basically, they took over that whole thing, and the government allows it. So they, they were dealing with us for I don't know how many years. But he said he went near them, and he was unconscious and, and almost died for two days. Uh, so, I mean... On their planet, it might be different, but on this planet, it's different because the energy, the vibration, and how much radiation is actually here on this planet right now. And I'm, I'm going to just say this out, out of my hat. 
it's going to increase over the next five to ten years enough 